So a prayer intercessor asks me to come to the office and tells me that um, they were in there praying like crazy, and they they continued to feel like something was in the room. Um, I said, what what was it like? Uh, Demonic attack? Demonic oppression? What was it like? They said, no, it was beyond that. It was more than just demonic. It was as if a human being was standing there, as if they were looking at me with binoculars, As if they were gathering information, finding out where. There was demonic presence, but it seemed like a human being was in the room. Now, is that astral projection? Let me give you a a warning. To the body of Christ worldwide, and wherever there have been chosen ones placed in churches, by the hundreds of thousands, Europe, Canada, Australia, United States, on and on, England. And when I say this, if you understand chosen ones, satanic ritual abuse, multiple personality disorder, the connection to the Nazis, military, all of that, here's the issue. Sub-personalities, programmed, trained, highly trained, demonized, empowered, everyone that I've ever met in 30 years has within them the ability to astral project, to go out of their body. At least some sub-personality knows how to get out of their body. How to uh, interact in the, quote, astral realm. And there they sit in local churches everywhere. Up front person looks fine, but the sub-personalities, well, while the person is looking intently at the pastor or in the midst of worship or while prayer is going on, Subpersonalities can be astraling out, charged by dark presence energy, and they can afflict, bring warfare, oppression, touch physically, bring confusion. Well, let's jump into the area of astral projection, astral attack, psychic assassination, and the weaponization of astral projection. This is Russ Dizdar, ShadowTheDarkness.net on the web. We want to welcome you listening by satellite, listening by internet radio, and then later on listening by uh, the archives and wherever friends have posted these at YouTube and other places. Well, God bless you. This is a supernatural hour, uh, unbelievably so. I think I was visited last night in preparation for this. I think that there's going to be some interaction this week. I really do. And I've already asked God to be um, preemptive, to be standing, to be ready to uh, engage. Because by God's providence, also the enemy's intrusions and um, the attempted spiritual warfare and battle, I have no doubt there's going to be interaction, battle, that kind of thing. So here we are, ready for a week that is going to be very incredible. This is turning out to be great, uh, well, providentially deep, in the sense that I'm announcing to you that um, one of the other books that we're doing, Astral Projection, Astral Attack, New Forms of Spiritual Warfare, it's going to be a book, yes, but it's um, a training manual for believers in strategically oriented targeted warfare prayer, how to detect, how to deal with ritual warfare, and uh, astral projection, that kind of visitation and warfare. Well, we're going to take a look at this week, all of the um, issues that we possibly can. We're glad that you're here. We're glad to hear from you from time to time. We're always apologizing for being so behind on the emails, but it's just physically impossible to keep up on everything. We know that there's going to be, um, well, this, like I said this week, we even asked that God would stretch out his hand to do extraordinary, extraordinary things to save and to heal and to deliver human beings like you. And that God would um, really show his power in the midst of um, this kind of interaction. We are on the edge of the events that will strike and uh, bring the last final seven years of human history, which will be unlike anything in all of human history. If you're new to the show, welcome. This is Russ Dizdar, ShatterTheDarkness.net on the web. We want you to know that if you go to the website, ShatterTheDarkness.net, 
The reason we like to point you there is because there are hundreds of other MP3s. We noticed that some of those have been up there for a couple of years, and there are those that have found the website lately or they found through another avenue MP3s. People have gotten saved. People have uh, written, and uh, I deeply appreciate the comments and, and words there on the Facebook uh, as we put up there this week's um, project that we're working on. Now, you can go to the left-hand side. There are courses, dynamic discipleship for new believers, devotional things uh, for believers, a blaze for God, supernatural apologetics course, free, theocentric counseling course, up, free, freedom encounters, 27 hours of lectures, free, God the Holy Spirit, 20, I think it's around 20-some hours, uh, free, spiritual gifts, it's halfway done, but what's up now is free. The book of Daniel, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. Confronting the powers, free. And that's an early course, I think two years ago. And uh, many have been using that. Now, Exposing Satanism 101, Sexual Decadence, the End of Man. We have uh, The Black Awakening. We have ESP versus HSP, The Rise of the Antichrist. Spiritual Warfare Basics, that has been all reconfigured and uploaded, I think, over 20 hours connected into that training course. And then Dark Rituals, Dark Powers, Ongoing, Prayer Series on Fierce Prayer, Aggressive Action, Ongoing. There are conferences, that materials that are up, uh, the Unholy Trinity, the Spirit Behind Globalism, and... Um, other ones that are being ready to be added. But this week, here's what we've said already. Quote, astral projection, astral attack, and psychic assassination. Now, this will, and I, I do pray by God's providence, engage and draw in those in military, in the, in, the, in, in the secret side, you know. Here's what I write. Quote, there are now thousands upon thousands who are learning to leave their bodies and engage the astral plane. There are thousands of websites, hundreds of books, videos that are teaching folks to go passive, to get the vibration, go out into the astral plane, quote and unquote. Uh, goes on, does the rise in astral projection have anything to do with uh, those dark visitations in sleep paralysis? Are some learning to weaponize this energized supernatural practice. New Agers 2012 or psychics, witches, Satanist military remote viewers and super soldiers are all now practicing what once seemed to be an old, obscure, hidden practice of dark sorcerers. How do you know if you're a target of astral attack? How do you stop it? And if you practice this art, and you realize what's really behind it. How do you break free? We're going to deal with the casualties of astral projection also. Astral projection, basically what it is, we're going to just jump into um, its connection with sleep paralysis and then dark intrusions. Matter of fact, on the website, we have the new um, audio overview. Every week, there'll be an audio overview of the entire week. It's about 10 minutes long. You can listen to all the week uh, and um, the connections that we've had with... Uh, uh, with um, Watchman Radio last weekend and the interview and last Wednesday nights where we had a former witch, 28 years. Now they also dealt with this issue and, and the powers and they turned to Christ. There's a reason for that. We're glad you're here. We trust that it's going to be providential for you. And again, may God stretch out his hand to save and to heal and to deliver I would not want this one hour to go without God's power, presence, uh, His work being done. That's what it's all about. I have no shame in telling you God loves you, God seeks you, and no one desires you more. Nobody wants you more than God. In Christ, you can come to know God and have the gift of indestructible immortality. There's so much to it. And uh, I hope you'll listen through the entire broadcast. We're glad to be with you and want to mention again, because some of the newest materials that we're working on, the little book called Once Blind, this material here that will be put in book form, training manual form, and uh, other things, hopefully by the time we get to future Congress in Branson, Missouri, 
We're hoping that you're going to be there in uh, later on in July. So I have some of you writing me, telling you that you're going to be here and so forth. So we're glad to hear that. Remember, the archives are there for you and for you to send around. And uh, we appreciate, without commercials, without product sales, the only thing we have is a support tab on the Shatter site. And you can help us out, and we sure do need you. Thank you. This broadcast may bring uh, a lot of engagement. It may, um, as we ask God to stretch out his hand, because again, the archives, there are going to be those in Russia, those in China, those all around the world, um, Canada, all over the place that are going to listen. I have no doubt they're going to be chosen ones, Luciferians, Satanists, and others, and those that practice this. There might be psychics that claim their spirit guides have guided them and enabled them to astral project. There um, is already a warning, a sense of warning by the Spirit of God that astral projectors, <laughs> those engaged in the practice because of this series, are going to try to engage. We're glad to have you come on the field. In that realm, God owns it from beginning to end, and we've already put up the prayers. Ultimately, for your good and your salvation, we pray for you. We really do. No matter how wicked, evil, in that hiddenness that you think you're secure in, don't forget what I've shared, the language of the Spirit of God. Hebrews chapter 4. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. If you're listening to the program this week, and if you're listening to the archives later on, you can go back to the archives. You can go back to the, um, well, during the week anyway, and there's a PDF file of the broadcast study notes if you want those. Monday, June the 20th, 2011, halfway towards 2012, right? Yeah, so many things going to be occurring. So astral projection, what is it? Why even talk about it? Well, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, because thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, I mean, it's off the charts. It's really kind of quiet. The The pastors, the theologians aren't really talking about it. Very few in the body of Christ are talking about it. But it's huge, huge among 2012ers and psychics and New Agers. And um, deep... Uh, Old practicer, you know, practitioners of left hand path. Now they've been into it for a long time. They're experienced. They know what they're doing, and they know why. But we want to talk about um, how it is done and uh, the engagement, the uh, energies, the vibration. We're going to talk about all these things, and we're going to tell you why we think there's a reason that it's connected to sleep paralysis. And during this uh, broadcast here. We're going to include kind of a uh, overview of Lewis Proud's book entitled Dark Intrusions. Now, that's kind of an investigation he does on the issue of sleep paralysis. Now, as I read that book and, and was going through it and highlighting it again and again, it moves from just the intrusion of something coming at nighttime Always seems to be at nighttime. But it goes from just the touch, the pressure, the paralyzing, the sounds, eventually the voices, the sexual touch and rape, to um, the um, engagement of trying to pull the human spirit out of the body. Many of you, many of you that experience sleep paralysis have not told all the story. Some have been ashamed to tell about the sexual side of it. Some have, um, because you've been shoved into deep, paralyzing fear, which brings passivity that opens the door for the entity. The dark intrusion, as Lewis Proud calls it, he had it started in 17 years old in his life. And so his investigation from 2007 on led him to write a book. Now, I'm going to mention his book a lot. It's not that I'm recommending it. As a researcher, I, I, I research all kinds um, of materials. Now, this is a, um, a book that brings out 
Once again, like I mentioned last week, we in this fallen world, spiritually dark, spiritually blinded. It's like being in a cave. You hear the sound, you feel the feelings, you know something's there. But because the lights are not really on, you can't see exactly. You can't define it exactly. So may I say with respect to Lewis Proud and my desire as a human being to say, That Jesus Christ, his love, his power, not only brings the exposure and definitiveness of what this is all about, but the freedom from it, let alone the, the, the love of God. See, I believe there is a massive agenda from the other side. The reasons for all this, a massive, detailed agenda that guides the globe, the whole world, billions into the end of days. So let's take a look at it on the notes. I got three things specifically, A, B, and C. A, what is astral projection? B, astral projection and sleep paralysis. And C, invitations into the astral realm by whom? Big old question mark there. By the way, how are you? Love that you're listening. Care about you. And because it's personal, the Spirit of God's right where you are, right where I'm at, It's as though I can reach out and touch you, but he can. I can't, but he can. And may God minister to you according to the needs. May destroy the dark side's work, expose it explicitly by the power of the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Hey, there's no one greater, no one loves you more, no one did for you what he did on that cross. So regardless of your background and the reasons you're listening, I trust it is supra natural and it leads you to the heart and the face of god i have no shame in that my friend what is astral projection simply this out of the body of experience your spirit leaves your body that's or projects out basically there's it's if if you remember some of you back in the 70s i think it was the 70s when uh, maybe it was in the 60s, I forget when, there was an old doll type thing. Someone bought it for my younger sibling, and and it, it was there in our household. And I remember uh, messing with the thing. It was called Stretch Armstrong. It was just kind of a bodybuilder looking kind of guy, but it's, he was kind of soft. I mean, but you could, what you can do is you can pull his arm like a foot. And it, you'd stretch him way out. You can take his arms and, and stretch him way out left and right and then let go. And then slowly his arms would stretch back all the way back to the normal. You can stretch his body. You can twist him. But he was called Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> I'm only giving you that example to say that in a sense, you're a human spirit. You're our body. You are soul. You are spirit. The immaterial part, soul and, and spirit, uh, the, the, the you inside, spirit. Uh, there's a sense that it's, um, if I can use the term, stretchable. Now in death, biblical death, Thanatos, when the body is absent of the spirit, when the spirit leaves in the biblical sense of death, Thanatos, the, the body absent of the spirit is dead. That's what death does. It, it, it rips the original creation. We weren't meant to be ripped apart. We were created body, soul, and spirit eternally prior to the fall. Death is an intrusion, abnormality, and God considers it an enemy. That's why the cross. Did you know that? The cross was the demonstration of God in the, well, the death of death, as someone said, in the death of Christ. Pretty cool. I think that's a tremendous um, insight. The death of death in the death of Christ. But the other side of the story is that there is the um, possibilities of getting out of your body. Now, if you get out of your body, what does that mean? People experience it in rape or massive trauma-based you know, abuse. They feel, and, and you can have stories all over the place, They're, they tell it to the psychologists and everybody else, that in the midst of the trauma, especially as a child, they feel themselves go out of their body, you know, they feel themselves dissociate enough to where they literally are going out of their body. And um, that's, I think, significant in this sense. 
that the experience is explained by many in, in, in that episode. I've heard it again and again, I, you know, of course, reading it. So whether the secular world or in the kind of counseling, biblically oriented, we call it theocentric counseling, um, that experience is, is shared by many. How about NDE, NDEs, near-death experiences? Though you've got to be extremely careful because, again, a near-death experience is not a biblical thanatos, a, a biblical death in total separation. So the, there is, uh, the, uh, there is again, the possibilities of interaction because we are not alone. There is truly the demonic side. And the trickery, the seduction, the deception, they are the masters, well, the originators of it all. So in near-death experiences, you have stories, again, for 20, 30 years now, of um, people who on the operating table or in a car crash or something where they felt they actually died, they, they left. And whatever is being done, they can feel themselves looking down at their body and eventually being pulled back or sucked back into the body and all of a sudden they're back in. Interesting stories. Now you also have along the way um, occult practitioners they have for years and years and years told the stories. I mean, it's really been kind of a, um, a secretive, a hidden part of the initiations. Old sorcerers this week, we're going to talk about some of the old sorcerers around the world, old and new. And uh, let's talk about future sorcery, Famicon, where the ability to um, extend, and I would say this, I would call it an E-B-E, an extending out, an extension out of the body. Uh, that's how I guess I would see it. You don't just leave in a sense of death and there's a total separation and your physical body begins, you know, dies, you know, and, and so forth. So really, um, in even looking at all of the case studies or hearing about it, or in my case, the experience of it when I was Golden Buddha in the early 70s, we were being trained. We had a master that trained us to be in a certain position. I'm not going to go through all of it, but primarily going absolutely passive. But the reason he was able to lead us, he was a energized, non-human enhanced practitioner and master. He was one that would go to Shambhala and talk about it but the true story here in my location is that he um, he left in one of his out-of-the-body experiences. He called it the Great Universal. Others call it the Ether, as military and other remote viewers do now. It may be the second heavenlies in that realm. In a in a um, well, it's called a excuse a domain. You ever read Ephesians 2, please understand the revelation of that one verse. The prince of the power of the air. That word air, eros, means right above your heads, the immediate dense atmosphere, but in a spiritual sense, it's called a domain, an actual domain, but it's in that realm, a, a realm. He is the prince of the power of the air of that realm, the spirit who is now, well, operative in a supernatural way, active, obviously. So when we think about, it's really, again, the human being, and I'm going to share on Tuesday night the biblical concept of uh, Elijah and Paul and John. They all had out-of-the-body experiences or extensions. They were still connected to their body, but it does seem like you actually leave. You can turn around and look back. Somehow there's still that connection. Some would call that the silver cord, as mentioned in Ecclesiastes. But whether you call it the astral plane, and this week, I'm going to call it the astral plane, but it is, to, in my view anyway, that second heavenlies, where Paul went to the third and saw things that he wasn't even allowed to speak about, tell about, didn't have vocabulary for, in an out-of-the-body experience. Now, this is not translation. This is not bilocation. This is extension. Something empowers and draws the human spirit out of the body 
and into an experience. Is it spiritual on both sides of the fence, whether it's by the Spirit of God or by another presence? Well, yeah, it's spiritual, clearly. We're going to look at some of those stories all during this week, and I have no doubt that there's going to be a lot of interaction you can um, you can go to the website and interact with us by email, but again, it's very hard for me to get to all of those. You can also post things on our Facebook site, as we've seen many others do, in discussions about their own experiences. I mean, this is going to involve astral, the concept not only just getting out, but how do you get out, why do you get out, who's out there, what is that out there, and what can be done. Why is uh, this connected to sleep paralysis, sexual attack? Why is this part of an occult form that practitioners in rituals and so forth um, are able then to attack, actually physically affect, make sick, curse? And in some new, well, confessed experiences, concepts of triangulation, we'll talk about that in the military sense, and we'll talk about psychic assassination. When those trained in this uh, ability, empowered, two or three of them go out together, three literally would go out together, well, to um, because in, in the view of the experiencer, they told me, it empowers them more, and um, they called what they did anyway, psychic assassinations. They were claiming they could actually kill somebody. Kind of like that concept of the men who stare at goats and the psychic power to project out. and Well, we'll talk about that on the night that we deal with the military side of these things. What I want to deal with right now is, and let's ask the question, can just about anybody do this? Well, yeah, it can be acted upon you. Listen, in every, in every biblical case, I'll explain it in detail tomorrow, by the hand of God, the Spirit of God, causing it. But when it comes to, and again, worldwide, Probably hundreds, I don't know how you can actually get the statistics down at this point. When they have statistics of, uh, and in, uh, in Lewis Proud's book, he gives statistics about sleep paralysis. But in most all of the, the stated experiences, he's, he's telling that it's more than just a visitation. Now, some have broken free right away, but if the experience goes on, it seems to lead to something pulling the human spirit, you, out of the body because it wants you in that realm for some reason. Point B on the notes, astral projection and sleep paralysis. Four points. Number one, now in the uh, realm of sleep paralysis, you're you're talking hundreds of thousands worldwide, cultures, whether you go to the Scandinavian countries, Europe, whether you go to the old hag concept, uh, China has this experience and the concept of the dead coming back that died in in anger and and, uh, all these other kinds of, um, I mean, you can find this all the way back to uh, even when you deal with incubus, succubus and so forth and You've got to understand that there are practitioners using this in sexual rape. And uh, one wonders how this engages the concept of uh, the attempts at even Nephilim. What can spirit do in in causation, uh, the physics of the spirit in affecting um, the human? It is without question God, by the Holy Spirit, overshadowed Mary. The Holy Spirit caused the conception. And in that, that involved then DNA, the genetics, everything about Christ, you have God now in human flesh. That's the physics of God. When I say supernatural, I mean it's just beyond our ability to understand. It's done by, I mean, there's a way, if you want to say there's a science to it, but the science of God is so so far beyond humanity. It's amazing to me that scientists, well, they think they can really pull down God into their microscopes and 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 uh, and examine. It hasn't been done, and it won't be done. Let me say this too. Number two, multicultural. Now, I already mentioned. I mean, you, you got this everywhere. I mean, to the Russians. And to the Russians and the Chinese, we notice there's thousands of downloads. Listen, email us and let us know about your experiences. 
Uh, we know all through Europe, this is a major issue. Not just the sleep paralysis side, but the practitioner side, those purposely doing it. Now, I shared last week in a story about a woman who had learned to practice this out-of-the-body astral projection, in which she engaged entities, one having sex with one, then having sex with a, a group of them, and then realizing she's half in, half out of her body, and something's having sex with her on her couch. In the next room, her baby is taking his nap. I mean, it's a wild story. But there are now thousands and thousands of them. Some people hate it. Some people feel captivated. And these are very similar in connection to the abduction scenarios. As a matter of fact, I was listening to Whitney Strieber last night. And I had ordered a, a book to read of his called The Key, A True Encounter. Now, in reading this, I'm reading right now just the description. Listen to this description. Quote, this is an unsettling and ultimately enlightening narrative of what happened that night. Streber, Whitney Streber, was never really sure who this strange and unknowing visitor was. Now he puts down a master of wisdom. Yeah, that's that's a that's like a cosmocrater. That's what they're like. They're like the 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 great white brotherhood, the ascended master type. It goes on to say here about Whitney Strieber's experience. He's known around the world, you know him, communion, so forth. A figure of a different realm of consciousness. You're going to notice that a lot. A figure, an entity, of a different realm of consciousness. A Now listen, as it goes on, it describes it as an intelligent being. He called him the master of the key. The one thing of which Strieber was certain is that both the man... And the encounter was real. The main concern of the master of the key is to save each of us from self-imprisonment. Mankind is trapped. The stranger tells Streber, I want to help you spring the trap. Listen to that. The entity that engages Whitney Streber, called the master of wisdom in his account of it, I'm going to tell you right now, I think it's a cosmocrater doing what um, 2 Corinthians 11 says, metaschizmazotai, metaschizmazotai, transfiguring. You see, when we go through this this week, it's not just isolated experiences. It is global. It has been going on really kind of secretively, but has become so broad now that uh, though we will hit the tip of the iceberg, it's so much broader than I'm going to tell you this week. Because behind all the experiences and all the engagement and all those who are willing and unwilling, witting and unwitting to all of it, there is a master agenda behind it. The cosmocrat are listed in, in Ephesians chapter 6. When the Spirit of God identifies the demonic entities as arche, cosmocrater, exousia, and porneus penumenicae. That might be involved, too, because those would be the wicked, um, unclean-type spirits that would engage sexually. But the entity is communicating to Whitney Strieber, telling him that mankind is trapped. And he quotes this entity, I want to help you spring the trap. Now, that's interesting to me. He goes on to explain that um, this entity is going to give them some, you know, a, a, a lesson in human potential, esoteric psychology, and man's fate. The entity, he illuminates, and I'm quoting, he illuminates why man has been caught in a cycle of re repeat violence and self-destruction and the sender, the very real possibility, the possibility of release from that. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this entity, is, what he's doing is giving the con, a con, listen, a, a counterfeit theology to the fall of the human race. An explaining of the fall of the human race in Luciferic twist. It goes on to say about this book, I, I need to say this because the, the, the dots are connected clearly. The uh, Luciferic synchronicity is clear. I quote again, it is... In its breadth and intimacy, 
the key, this book, in the encounter with this entity, is on par with the contemporary metaphysical traditions such as the Course in Miracles and other, other modern wisdom teachers like Carl Jung. Listen, when you have entities that are guiding individuals and they are the fallen ones, they are the demonic realm, whatever they present themselves as, because that's what they must do, transfigure. To, um, to morph into whatever is necessary in the engagement. Now, that could be in the ins- instance of those who write for them, who are guided, who are led astray, and begin to write their agenda out. That's one thing, the writings. There again, there again the Spirit of God's already prophesied that would occur. 1 Timothy 4.1. That not only would there be a broad global ramping up of these entities engaging humanity for one reason, mass deception, with the secondary reason of finding some of those individuals willing to then be the uh, recipients of writings that would then further influence humanity, layering Luciferic doctrine upon doctrine upon experience upon doctrine layering the blindedness, empowering the agenda, and getting ready for the events. Now, when I listen to Whitney Strieber in this description of the book, The Key, when I when I read this part where the entity says, I want to help you spring the trap. Now, what they really want to do is to, they're really working at springing the trap of the great chaos, the great rebellion, to open that door. They want, because on a planetary level, the spiritual powers are bulging at the seams. What they're not telling you is that Second Thessalonians 2, the restrainer, is restraining all of it from being unleashed at this very second. The moment the restrainer is removed, you can be sure... All of what is on that side. We're experiencing the tip of the iceberg, the breakthrough. But the berg, the 95% that is unexperienced, will come gushing in like a torrent when the great chaos occurs, collapsing the world as we know it. So all of you that know and realize New World Order, globalism, all that kind of stuff, I'll say again, There is no such thing without the spirit operative and the power collectively behind it. Under point B in the notes, I have astral projection and sleep paralysis. Point three, sleep paralysis and astral projection have risen on the same chart collectively. I mean... If you, if you were able to really track it completely, you would see where they both, where the rise of the sleep paralysis engagement and the rise of uh, astral projection, getting out of the body, out of, out of the body experiences, all of that goes hand in hand. Even when it comes to Pharmacon and drugs, ayahuasca and in uh, Africa, uh, the other drug they use is a little bit different than ayahuasca. But the Timothy Leary uh, episode in the late 60s, all of these particular pharmakia, pharmacon, these kinds of things are inseparable because of, the again, the demonic realm of the root and what to use to open the human being to direct contact with the spirits. Now, when I looked at all of this in point four, I have simply here that there is um, there is clearly entities engaging humanity on a broad scale, on a uh, variety of ways, and have been. It has been really secretive, and the more you know, it's been reported, the more that we see it all, the overwhelming dots of the dark side are being colored in, and. If you know biblical prophecy very, very well, you will see this evolutionary development of the sequence of satanic development. Their agenda is rising. It will occur. But individual experiences is one thing, but multiple hundreds of thousands worldwide, well, that's another story then, isn't it? So I'm going to take you here for a moment. I'm going to just I'm going to I'm going to read some comments, some quotes out of the book, Dark Intrusions, 
It is not a Christian book. It does not have Christian dis- uh, Holy Spirit discernment. It, it, it doesn't give you the answers. But what is experienced is what I'm telling you uh, is experienced by many others. And because the Scripture, the Spirit of God says more demonic interaction, more demonic manifestation, more demonic metaschizmatsatai, that is transfigured into whatever's necessary, masters, light beings, etc., that they transfigure in this engagement with humanity. And they're looking for something, which we're going to talk about here in a second. But I'm going to go over some of the book Dark Intrusions. It doesn't have the answers. I'm only bringing it out as part of the um, part of the data uh, of this experience. Now, Lewis mentions in, in his book, Lewis Proud's book, uh, about the old hag concept and the paralysis. And this has been something that's gone on for years upon years. But it, but and again, I'm saying in in this book he re- refers to the helpless victim was then approached by an evil, malevolent entity. And that's pretty interesting to me that that's how he's going to describe it because he's not a Christian. He's he, there's no witness in this entire book that he has the spirit of God inside of him in any way. As a matter of fact, all of his experiences, all of his engagement with sleep paralysis and the entities. Well, it, he acknowledges the evil behind it, but eventually the energy and the connectedness to deep sexual experiences that he has. Now, he shares this in the book. So I'm not revealing anything that he has not revealed. He's talking about now, out of the, he's associating sleep paralysis with out-of-the-body experience. And then eventually, this is going to connect with astral projection. He says, and I quote, obviously, the vibrations, in quotes. Now, he, in the very beginning, because he was an experiencer, this occurred, he says, Lewis Proud says, when he was 17 years old. And he refers to the vibrations. They were a kind of disconnection from his senses. As if his spirit, I'm quoting, was separating from his physical body. Now, in sleep paralysis, these visitations he was having, it is very clear in his confession of all that occurred to him that it led to -to out-of-the-body experience. And his descriptions of it is very much like what I was involved in. See, the master that trained us to learn how to leave our body and or wait for other entities, they called him the masters, to come. This is a man that in the... Area that I live, we can go back in history, we can get all the data you want on this. It is clearly said, because I've been into his home many, many years and was, was trained there and at the temple, but he left, he projected out, he never came back. He died. It is said that he went out to Shambhala and that he they tried other masters under him. I was not one, I was only a, a learner in in the beginnings. I was going to go that direction until God intervened and the Spirit of God intervened and I came to Christ. But this Master Ong never returned and he died. Is that a possibility in astral projection? The so-called silver court? I mean, all of a sudden you go so far. One experiencer said it's like you know that stretch arms song. You, you stretch it so far and far and farther and farther. And, I, and again, I, I did this to that little uh, toy, stretch arms. We stretched it so far that it finally snapped. The arm came off. The human spirit is not infinite, finite. And the sense of um, leaving the body under dark empowerment can lead to actual death we'll talk about the casualties later on this week i go on with this book dark intrusions and i say quote he says it is as if there is a malevolent presence nearby sometimes as if something is squatting on the chest to prevent the sleeper from moving he quotes another man stan cooch uh the author of total man that he had, he had sexual encounters in that state. And so as we're looking into this, we're looking at his, you know, Luce Proud's own paranormal experiences 
and maybe because of his own paranormal experiences. In other words, he was already layered. He was already initiated. And that opened him up to, again, without the Spirit of God, without the living Christ, um, this engagement is incurring to hundreds of thousands upon thousands. And there's times that real believers in Christ out there are experiencing something similar, and they've known what to do, and they're learning what to do. When Lewis shares in his book, when he was 17, the first time that it occurred, he says, I quote, I became receptive to the presence of invisible beings, and I still am. He says, I'm always in an altered state. And I'm going to go through some of the things that he says to comment, because what he shares in his experience is what is occurring worldwide and is very exposing of the dark sides. He doesn't go all the way. He doesn't know the real reasons. He doesn't engage the entities as they really are. He doesn't bring in the Spirit of God, the Word of God, the authority of Christ. And uh, to my knowledge, by the end of the book that I've looked at, he never gets free, but the experiences that he has leads him not just into the paranormal, but to the occult, into the realms of the sorcery, into the realms of all of the um, supernatural stuff on the dark side, even when it masquerades as light. This is part of the big issue. This is why millions, millions worldwide are being layered. Maybe you. Maybe you're listening right now, and you know this is about you. You know the experience. You know that it's not of God. Whenever the Spirit of God engages, whenever God in sign, wonder, miracle, whatever way God engages, it is to lead you to God. It is to lead you to direct salvation, to knowing Christ and the indwelling Spirit coming into your life, to know God. God leads you to God. The other spirits don't. That's the rule. That's based on their nature and their will. Now he goes on to say that um, that he that um, well let me just read some of the things when he says he experienced you know always and he feels he's always in that kind of you know altered state and and it seems as though he knows there's as I read it as a believer there's there's an open doorways into his life. He explains sleep paralysis this way: it is a condition whereby a person experiences temporary paralysis of the body. Um, shortly after or during, you know, or right during sleep. Now, this is this is um, this is the issue where he confesses, and he and he brings in other writers. He brings in another writer from the seventeen uh, hundreds, eighteen hundreds, uh, Henry Fuseli, called, and he wrote a book called The Nightmare in seventeen eighty one, seventeen eighty one, which shows a young woman lying on her bed asleep. This is the this is the drawing, by the way, the painting that's out there with a large, hairy demon sitting on her chest. That's from the 1700s. Now I go to where he comments about psychologist J. Allen Cheyenne of the University of Waterloo um, in Canada. Now, he's collected what he says up to 28,000 tales, stories. 28,000. One psychologist. Stories of the sleep paralysis, which is inseparably linked to out of the body, then ultimately linked to the astral projection issues. Now he talks about, well, let me go down a little further here. I want to tell you what, what happens. Here's what he says. The images people see are predominantly um, indefinite and insubstantial. He says they see shadowy beings, shadowy beings floating around the room or standing near the bed. The entities I see are the dark, shadowy, serpentine creatures with long thrashing tails. I also see gray orbs of various sizes, which looks, they look like balls of liquid smoke, unquote. Pretty interesting. He says that sleep paralysis experience is attributed to the, the mare, or the demonic being, uh, the nightmare. That comes out of the, he says, the um, Middle Ages in England. A demonic being thought to attack people at night. Now, again, why at night? Why always at night? That's what I, I think is um, part of the reasons we need to really understand the story that Jesus tells of the parable. 
When the Son of Man goes, he shares the word of God in the wheat. You know, there's people that accept it. They begin to grow up, and he, he, he likens that to the wheat. But then during the night, the evil one comes, and he engages to create tares. Those who are directly committed to and aligned with and linked to his cause. That, again, is very telling about all these experiences. Now, he quotes manuals. He quotes international classification and so forth. He talks about figures between 40 and 60% of people that experience it, uh, experience also the -the out-of-the-body portion of it. He he says this in in his... um, In an article that he reads uh, or that he deals with called Beware of the Spirits is based on the real life experiences of his own life. He writes in the article, Beware of the Spirits. It's an accurate description of what I experienced during the typical uh, sleep paralysis. Now, again, here's a man that is not a believer in Christ and would not know the difference in that sense. But he's telling you very clearly. He says these words, but in truth... When he's in that when he's in that state that he sometimes is screaming, and uh, into a semi-conscious state, he says, "I cannot kick or scream. In fact, I cannot move a single muscle in my body. Even though my mind is awake, for God's sake, I can't even open my eyes. All I can do is lie there as this thing attends to my forehead with delicate. Now listen." Loving strokes, whatever it is, I can smell the stench of its presence. I can taste its mind just as much as it can taste mine. It, it, he, he gives these stories of these encounters. They are absolutely um, unbelievable. He talks about a faint scream communicating a raw expression of fear that comes in. He talks about um, that fear is a major factor in what these entities want to do. But ultimately, here's what he says. He always gets it, an intense feeling of extreme evil that's around him. Then he talks about, I quote, succubus and incubus. Uh, these things, they wish to seduce someone. They alter their appearance. This is what he says. They alter their appearance in such a way as to appear more sexually appealing and more humanoid. Their true form is that of a typical looking demon with horns. And on and on. Pretty interesting. You understand the concept of sex with demons, how how that links a person, how deeply attached, diaminozoid, possessed an individual may become? Well, eventually, Lewis Proud goes into the uh, description of them as being incorporal, incorporal beings, which, you know, they wish to establish communication with a person. The process is one of correct tuning. It's very interesting to see how he explains the demonization, the encounter. And to literally be able to see, in as you read this, that the cloaking, the, the way in which they work, they must have the passivity. They must have the uh, fear factor. They must have the incremental approach. They must get further and further in. And eventually he's going to talk about the whooshing sound, the out-of-the-body experiences, the floating up here and there. I want to give you a couple other examples here in the last few minutes he um he refers to somebody else another writer that deals with the same subject i think the name is alois kephas an experienced lucid dreamer this is what this man reveals during an online radio show that he had encounters with inorganic beings In his book, The Lucid View, Investigations into the Occultism, Ufology, and and Paranoid Awarenesses, Kephas is a deep thinker and a man of considerable intellect whose writings demonstrate a profound understanding of magic and occultism, what he calls sorcery. Kephas considers himself a sorcerer of sorts and is certainly no stranger to altered states of consciousness. This, this writer then ex- explains, My experiences of deep paralysis have almost always entailed the irrefutable certainty of a non-human presence in the room, wrote Kephas. Since I was never under the impression of there being a fully physical or even, or even visibly present, however, the presence might be best described as, listen, 
a conscious energy field. Not that I ever opened my eyes to look. That was never an option. My bodily reaction to the presence was invariably one of terror. He goes on to say, quite overwhelming, enough merely to experience its energy field as a form of psychic sensation. He goes on, I was aware of a consciousness outside of my own, immeasurably more powerful. Now, the time we have left, let me tell you this very clearly. In that book, revealing stories of authors and writers from different continents, telling us about their experiences with these entities, as some of you may have had, look at the definitions, look at what's going on, and I'm telling you again, the dark side, as described by the Spirit of God, Cosmocrator, the Arche, the Exousia, the Poneus Penumenicae, the evil vile ones, um, and Planos, the seducing, the ones that are like imposters. Let me tell you biblically how far back this goes. Book of Job, Book of Job, chapter 4, let me read it to you. A, I'm reading right out of the Word of God, Job chapter 4. A word was secretly brought to me. My ears caught a whisper of it. Amid disquieting dreams in the night, when deep sleep falls on men, deep sleep falls on men, fear and trembling seized me and made all my bones shake. A spirit glided past my face, and the hair on my body stood on end. It stopped, but I could not tell what it was. A form stood before my eyes. And I heard a hushed voice. Now it goes into more. This is the Job that had the experience where Satan came to bring him down and get him to blaspheme God and turn his back on God. This is the one that worked secretly without Job at first knowing what was going on that brought great destruction. Physical diseases, all kinds of things. And in the context of all of this, a being, a spirit, glides past his face and encounters him. He has a form. He, same type of experience in a way. Let me share with you in the last couple of moments that there is a corresponding in the rise of demonic presence worldwide. It connects to sleep paralysis. It connects to astral projection. These entities in sleep paralysis ultimately want to take and you'll have story after story of them grabbing a hold of the human spirit and trying to pull the experiencer out of the body. Where do they want to take them? What are they seeking? Why is it happening to hundreds of thousands, if not millions? We need the authority, the purity, the clarity of Jesus Christ. He's there to save you and deliver you from its experience. Call on Him. Receive Him as Savior and Lord. Come to Christ. Believers need to know new levels, biblical levels of spiritual warfare. Hey, this is Russ Dizdar, Shadow of the Darkness. See you tomorrow night.